Hello, I'm Mark. I'm Casey. And today we're going to talk a little bit about Optimus and uh -huh. what's going to happen. But first, roll that title. You're watching the Tesla Life Express! Hello everyone, thanks for joining us this evening. We wanted to uh, talk a little bit about, uh, I guess it's an article that came out recently, actually a couple of articles that relate to TeslaBot or Optimus Prime or Subprime, depending on when you've looked at it. But uh, there was an article recently indicating that uh, Tesla believes that the bot is getting ready or is ready to start working in some factories. Now, I would imagine that the first factories are going to be, you know, the labs that they're operating in now. And after that, they may have some workstations that will happen in, say, um, Giga, Texas. There may be some spots they can use them uh, for assembling something or moving something around. I think those, those are going to be the, the first basic tests of this robot. And I think... I think this is a prime, a prime and good location for Tesla to uh, start to operate these robots. Similar to the semi uh, that they started to move their own product, that's that's the place to begin. Something that you know, and something that you can, um, I guess, direct that asset to do and have an idea as to how, what's what's the correct way to do it, what's the wrong way to do it, and then start to tweak how the robot uh, operates. And um, I think uh, I think the sooner the better. What do you think, Casey? So too, like when you're looking at, say, the cost of these things, like no matter what they cost, they're gonna be less than the industrial robots that they're using today. So if you're looking mm -hmm. at anywhere from say 50 to 200, $300,000 for an Optimus bot, I don't know where it's gonna end up. Uh, it might start that high, but who knows? Uh, you're looking at basically the price of your other products, the cars versus what KUKA charges you. Yes, yeah. I think that it would be a great place to start it there in the in the uh, in the Tesla factories. But the other question, then, while you're looking at that, though, is like the uh, obviously there's a big maintenance involved, but the, the cycle and, and durability life and everything on on the bigger bots is it going to be higher than on the on the smaller bot, or are they going to be just like the cars where they're already you know as long as you do whatever minimal maintenance is required, they'll be all right. Hey, it's, it's, it's been running for two hundred thousand hours. Time to oil the elbow. <laughs> and and that's something they got to learn, right? Like, and the only way you're going to learn is actually have the robot start to perform these tasks that you believe there will be a market for. So yeah. having that uh, robot bend arms or use its digits to pick up things or put things together uh, or transport things from one area to the other, uh, those are all things that Tesla is going to have to figure out uh, as to how that robot can perform those tasks. Can they perform them as quickly as a human? Can they perform them quicker than a human? Can that uh, can that robot uh, perform the task uh, without supervision? All these things are, are going to have to be tested. And um, I think that uh, in one of their factories or a couple of their factories, that's the prime location to do it. Another thing is that um, we know that uh, in some of the videos, obviously these robots are untethered and they're going around with battery power doing these things. In a factory setting, they do have the ability to run the power to them by cable and drop it into the robot. So it can still have free motion. It can still move around within a certain circle, depending on the cable length that's above it. But that could eliminate, okay, the battery's running down. The battery has the has to recharge. The robot has to stop. Or it, it, you know, it, it may give them more options uh, to test them uh, different things uh, that they're doing. So yeah. that that would be a plus in their factories too. And depending on where the ports are, they could plug themselves in. Like, hey, I need to get over station seven today, and uh, the job at station seven and the cycle time at station seven requires me to have power. Oh, boom. and and then then they get to work. Uh, yeah, the way I kind of see them running this at first is. Uh, not, uh, obviously, if they're like at the battery sorting station, they can do that by themselves. But uh, the way I kind of see it is like whenever you see uh, the factory uh, videos, they they go to put the dashboard in, and you've got uh, the one person on the side with the, uh, with the with the the forks and the dashboard, and the other person on the other side kind of guiding it to make sure it doesn't scratch the heck out of the out of the frame while they go in. 
uh, I could see the robot on the on the other end rather than uh, two humans. Have the human pushing it, and then Optimus with his precision guidance making sure that you hit the target. And uh, that would be pretty cool. And then other, you know, something is that you've got like five people on a team. Now you have four people in a robot. Yeah, and then the other thing could be that the, um, of course, uh, being able to um, to show the outside world your successes with the robot, that's going mm -hmm. to drive outside industry to say, I could use that robot for this task. It's doing the same yeah. thing. I need a robot for that. And that would be a great way to start that robot innovation outside of Tesla is to is to show the public as they've been doing somewhat uh, to this point, showing the successes of the robot being able to pick up an egg and move something gently. And then another way they're, they're actually uh, moving something with force. All these things are, are starting to give the, the people outside of Tesla ideas as to how that robot could work in my industry and uh, what I could use the, the robot to do based on what they're showing us in these videos. Yeah, particularly stuff that's like distasteful or you can never have enough people hired for the basic task that, that your employees feel is beneath them. All right, fine. Nobody wants to do this job. There's a robot. Now you guys can supervise the robot. We need three robot supervisors for fleet of 30 and uh, you all can do the more fun stuff now. Yeah. And then the other thing I want to touch upon is that the uh, price of that robot, as you mentioned, it's going to be high out of the gate. Like, let's let's face it. But but Elon had mentioned in a tweet just this week uh, or just last week indicated that the uh, robot once up to scale, he believes would be priced somewhere in the area of 20 to to um, I'm sorry, 25 to 30 thousand dollars is where he put it at. So that, uh, again, it's to scale. And of course, this is Elon time. So this is not something that's going to be introduced immediately. Those first robots are going to be at least, you know, $150,000 would be my guess, uh, if they're going to sell them at all. Maybe they'll just rent them at the beginning. Who knows? But uh, it is something uh, to, uh, to keep our eye on as time goes along. As that robot starts to pick up, the ability to do certain functions, um, it's going to become useful to the outside world. Uh, as yeah. long as they keep us informed about it, uh, it's going to be something that will, uh, again, have duties uh, that um, many outside of Tesla will realize based on just watching the progress from, from the outside as we are. Yeah, and so right before the show, I'd asked uh, Mark, and then I said, then we stopped the conversation because... Uh, rather than get the answer then, I figured it'd be good for you all to get it at the same time. So what would you use the, the bot for? Obviously, assuming that it was in a budget, uh, obviously if it was 300 grand, you probably wouldn't get one. Right, right. That's that's interesting. What would I use a robot for? Um, based on its dexterity, and again, I'm, I'm just thinking, my my job right now is working with software. So and and sales so i don't know if i could get a robot to do something like that but okay. but at home i could use a robot for certain tasks uh such as i don't know um we knew the mowing toilet. mowing the lawn oh, yes. <laughs> like like th that that you know something physical that uh yeah. it could do by actually pushing um you know, maybe maybe moving a wheelbarrow around uh, as I'm as I'm loading it up, it could go uh, to a certain place and dump it, as opposed to me doing it. So right. there could be some certain things that that you could incorporate a robot to do uh, on a daily basis. Obviously, you've thought about this a little bit. What what would make sense for you? Yeah, I agree. Uh, in in that first scenario of the Elon Magic Price Land, uh, if it were there to begin with, I, I was thinking. Yeah, uh, kind of like domestic and helping hand. So obviously, like I said, working out in the yard, have it do some stuff out in the yard, or if it's cut the grass, you just go cut the grass. And um, the obviously domestic as well. You know, hey, uh, wash those dishes, clean the toilet, uh, fold these clothes. But obviously, at three hundred grand, that wouldn't be the case. At one hundred and fifty, no. I might, I might make some some jobs for it to do. Let, let's like, let's see. He got it down to twenty five grand. Twenty five well, makes I sense. I, these things. Uh, yeah, you I'm get a hundred of them around the house. <laughs> I don't know about that. I started off with one for the house and then I'd invent some job for it to do for business. 
and then I would just get more and more as as, as time went on. <laughs> Assuming that uh, that um, that Bill Gates's robot tax uh, didn't affect small businesses on the up, uh, obviously you wouldn't want Ford and and, and GM and, and Tesla to replace functional jobs. But if those jobs didn't exist before, then uh, I would be I would be willing to create them. But uh, not if they taxed me the same level as 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 a Tesla or a Ford or uh, some food factory because I, I don't got it. So <laughs> gotta, gotta have it have it match. And that's a good question to ask our audience. What do you believe uh, a Tesla bot could do for you? Um, everybody out there is in different type of businesses. Uh, would it be was there any business function you could see the robot performing for you? Uh, is it if it's uh, domestic? What would you have that robot doing for you around the house? Um, what is your price you know, point for personal versus business? What, what, yeah. what do you think you might buy in if if you buy in at all? I know that some people are just anti-robot, but it's it is something that if you have a like I really see that a, a physical job as a person gets older uh, they they are less physical they, they can move less things. If a robot could perform some of those, what a wonderful way uh, to supplement your life is to is is if a robot could take some of those physical things away from your requirement to do, um, you could control it and save your body um, the the wear and tear uh, because the robot could you know you could replace a part if uh, it has some wear and tear, whereas right. that's much tougher to replace on a human. Right, like if you're going out. Um... Um, camping or cooking or, or, or even go out cooking or hunting or something. It could be the it could be the pack meal. It could it could hold the supplies for you. All right, hey, uh, you're golfing. Here's your here's your six iron. Uh, I don't know if that's the right size, but whatever. <laughs> you get my point. And um, and then obviously as as Mark said, you know, depending on when this price drop happens, like, uh, at some point I'm going to get older, and you know, I, I, I'm a little bigger, and uh, I wouldn't expect my little wife to uh, to to be helping me get around and. Something like this could be uh, an aid. In That's a perfect person. example. A personal assistant uh, being yeah. able to to help you up, uh, being able to uh, uh, you know be a somewhat some uh, something to lean on as you're going upstairs, or uh, being able to uh, traverse you over a rough uh, rough um, ground. Um, right. Another thing. And, and and, and and once it hits those lower price points, it'd be perfect for that. And and not saying that oh you know you're not gonna oh I, I'm gonna do it until I can. Uh, that will keep you out of out of a facility even longer because you can just stay at your own home. And and yeah, you can do it yourself. Keep walking, and then one day you take a slip. It sees this, it catches you. Or if you're too heavy for the the requirements of what because Elon did say initially that it was gonna have certain requirements that aren't compatible with where he plans to use it now. Um, but say you do take that fall down the stairs, it can call emergency response. Hey, you know, my dude just fell and, uh, send help now. Yeah. He's not moving. Versus, Somebody send help. Yeah. Here's, yeah, versus, it, could, versus, it could call 911. So, uh, yeah. and that's, that leads, us, that, right. leads us, that leads us to another point is that, um, Tesla had announced that they're starting to integrate 5G into the cars. They're also integrating it into the robot. That's so, right. uh. Having having that uh, ability to call at any point uh, to be a communication device, it's an extension of the iPad, right? Like it, it could be it could be that communication device. Hey, call so and so, and if the speaker comes out of its chest and you can talk to so and so, it's got the video through the eyes. Like uh, all that uh, could be rolled into this uh, device as well. Actually, that would be perfect at meetings. Like it would literally just sit in the chair and then as it says at the speaker, uh, that would be a very natural video because it's at human scale. And I could see a large company buying a couple of them for their conference room. Just exactly. So, yeah. you know, they're they're becoming uh, uh, the ability that um, they're, they're, they're a, a place setting for a human. Uh, but... Uh, it is strange. It, it will be strange to start with. Um, it'll be pretty wild. It'll be pretty science fiction-y uh, to begin. But uh, 
I can see based on the progress that Tesla has made already and just its its few iterations of Optimus uh, is that um, they're really dialed into this. Uh, they are making a robot, a real humanoid robot that will function in our world. And of course, with the advances of FSD-12, they're incorporating that into the robot as well. So it will be fully autonomous. It will be able to not bump into tables and things. It'll know what is all around it. It'll know how to avoid things. It'll know how to get somewhere. It'll be all built in uh, to these robots. And uh, that's going to be a brave new world. Yeah. I've got another thing this might be for, but that's going to be for after the show because... Uh... <laughs> Uh, no, no, not 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 um, not any of the stuff that a lot of the Elon fans say they're going to use it for. But I'm wondering now if that might explain some of uh, Elon's ex posts lately. And I'll talk to Mark about that after the, after the show. <laughs> very good, very good. Well, with that, I think we'll wrap it. Casey, when's your show happening uh, every week? So we catch you every Sunday at 1:10 p.m. Eastern, and then we catch you right back here on the Tesla Life Live. On Wednesdays. Wednesday, 7 p.m. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thanks, everyone, for joining us. If you haven't already, please give us a thumbs up. Press that subscribe button. It really helps out a small channel like ours, and I would really appreciate it. So uh, with that, we will catch you next time and find out what's happening in the Tesla life.